Only 10% of the Amazon jungle has been explored so far. But what about the other 90%? Even when modern technologies such as LiDAR and satellite photography have revealed previously unknown networks of roads, settlements, and strange buildings that may be thousands of years old, the Amazon jungle remains largely unknown. And the few people who dared to try and uncover the mysteries that hide under the tree canopy have been silenced. What secrets are hidden in the jungle? And who would want them to remain hidden? We'll find out in this new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome. When one thinks of uncharted lands in the 21st century, it is always Antarctica that comes to mind. After all, it is one of the coldest places on Earth, a harsh remote environment with unforgiving weather that has killed many seasoned explorers. It may be surprising then to learn that there is a place on our planet in the middle of the tropics and spanning nine countries which remains equally unexplored to these days. Amazonia, or the Amazon rainforest, covers a surface roughly equivalent to that of the United States of America, or twice the size of India, the most populated country on Earth. More than 400 indigenous groups live in the Amazon rainforest, many of them having absolutely no contact with the outside world. It is also the most biodiverse region in the world, housing millions of species of plants and animals. Being the largest reserve of biomass, producing around 20% of the world's oxygen and being home to 10% of the species on Earth, it seems only right that the countries will protect the Amazon jungle, banning its exploitation and restricting access to the general public. Also, many branches of the Amazon River are infested with flesh-eating piranhas, electric eels, leeches, and other dangerous animals not to speak of the treacherous quicksand, the tropical diseases, the natural predators, or the many cannibal tribes that live there. But this still doesn't explain why so few people from outside have ventured into this dense forest, especially taking into account the marvelous tales that the few Amazon explorers have told. The captain of the first ship to sail up the Amazon River was the Spanish Francisco de Orellana. He discovered this river in the early 16th century and also lost most of his crew to the several warrior groups he encountered on his voyage. One of the things that most impressed Orellana was the fact that women fought alongside men, and even more fiercely, which for a European was unthinkable. Remembering an old Greek legend that spoke of a race of warrior females called the Amazons, he named the river after them. After one particularly violent fight with indigenous peoples, his crew brought Oriana a native they took prisoner. Thanks to an interpreter they had on board, he learned incredible things. According to their prisoner, these women warriors lived deep in the heart of the jungle, many days inland, and they ruled over more than 70 settlements which meant there were perhaps tens of thousands of Amazons. Amazons ignored the institution of marriage and instead used war prisoners from neighboring tribes for sex. It was said that the children that resulted from these unholy unions were slain and their bodies were sent to the villages of their fathers. But if the newborn child was a woman, they took them in and taught them the art of war. The prisoner also claimed that the Amazon houses were overflowing with gold and silver and they had access to strange and valuable spices like cinnamon. Oriana spent several days after his return to Spain planning a new voyage to the Amazon River to find the lost treasures of the Amazon women. He had a detailed map and hired a group of heavily armed mercenaries to protect himself. Nobody knows what happened during that trip but Oriana was never seen again, and the secrets he found died with him. It was not until the late 19th century that the British geographer and explorer Percival Fawcett attempted another expedition to the heart of the Amazon rainforest. He wanted to find the elusive city of Raposo, which in old Portuguese maps was just referred to as Z. Between 1906 and 1925, he conducted several expeditions each one more ambitious than the last one. He was the first European to encounter and describe the deadly anaconda, 
a giant spider he named Apazwaka, and other strange animals. In 1914, he and his group came upon a small settlement where a tribe called Maxubis lived. Fawcett explained in his diaries that these people were sun worshippers, just like the Amazon women Oriana had found, and his accounts became stranger as time went on. One of his diaries spoke of the Maricoxi, a Sasquatch-like tribe of very hairy creatures that threatened his party with bows and arrows. According to Fawcett, they did not have language but instead communicated solely by grunting. He managed to stay alive for a long time thanks to a strange statue he always carried, a jade skull with inscriptions that was said to have tremendous power over the natives. He never explained how he came into possession of this statuette, but it had supernatural powers. Thanks to this, he even attempted solo expeditions, and it's improbable that Fawcett was killed by natives. His last diary entries were written in 1925, and his body was never recovered from the jungle. Some people claim that he did find the city of Z, and he stayed there until his passing. There are countless tales of encounters with secluded tribes. Many of them we only know by name, and perhaps some of the names refer to the same peoples, but we may never know. One of such obscure tribes is the Toromona, the Spanish conquistadors of Peru who managed to subdue the powerful Incas learned from some of their prisoners of a secret place in the Amazon jungle called Paititi. Paititi was supposed to be the place where the Incas hid their biggest treasures, so few people knew where it was, and even fewer knew how to find it. Apparently, there were secret tunnels leading to Paititi from Cusco, the Inca capital but the Incas sealed them with rubble so nobody could ever find Patiti. That is why the Spaniards came across the Toramona Indians, a small group which supported the Incas in battle but did not have a particular allegiance to the Incas. The Spaniards captured their chieftain, a vigorous Toramona named Tarano, who agreed to take them to Patiti in exchange for his freedom. But just as Oriana before and Fawcett later, their fate is unknown. The number of explorers lost in the Amazon jungle should not be surprising, taking into account the fact that cannibalism has been reported in various cultures of the region. Shuar and other Jivaroan peoples in the Amazonian Ecuador and Peru are known as headhunters, and they usually decapitate enemies and through ancient techniques shrink their heads. They later use the shrunken heads, known as sansas, to scare off visitors and enemies. Shrunken heads keep the original hair and the eyes, nose, and mouth are sewn shut to prevent the soul from escaping the head and harming the owner. Other peoples, such as the Wari, formerly practiced endocannibalism, which means eating their own members. This was done only to people after their death, and it was regarded as a form of utter respect for the deceased. The body would be left for about three days after which they would perform ritual wailing and other religious ceremonies, build a fire, remove the visceral organs, and cook the body in the fire. In July 2018, Brazilian government officials took a picture of an indigenous man that became known as the Man in the Hole. He was the sole survivor of a lost tribe, the rest of whose members had been killed by farmers in 1995. For the following decades, he refused to have contact with the outside world, but accepted the seeds and tools the Brazilian government left him from time to time. Rumors of hidden caches like Paititi and even whole cities and civilizations have been reported since the early discovery of the Amazon River by Oriana. While some people might simply dismiss these stories as folklore, Archaeological discoveries like the Akakor ruins show how much remains unknown about past societies and their connection to the environment. In 1973, the famous occult expert Eric von Daniken was lured to Amazonia to find an alleged network of underground tunnels that connected different points of the jungle. At the moment, von Daniken thought these tunnels could be connected to other tunnels that led to Agartha, the hidden kingdom behind the surface of the Earth or even to the subterranean cities under Antarctica where German people migrated during the 1930s and 1940s. 
It was precisely a German journalist, Karl Brugger, who learned of the existence of these Amazonian tunnels by chance. On March 3rd, 1972, Brugger met a local Amazonian native called Tatunka Nara at a tavern. After a couple of drinks, Tatunka Nara felt comfortable enough to tell Brugger of a mythical town somewhere deep in the Amazonian jungle called Akakor. As we will see later, modern technology confirmed the existence of such ruins. But Nara also spoke of 13 cities that were built underground and thus impossible to see by satellite photography. These cities were once prosperous, but due to unknown circumstances, most were abandoned and now lay in ruins. Nara named the most important cities of this ancient civilization Akakur, Akanis, Akahim, Cusco, and Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu has been discovered in 1911, and Cusco was well known since the 16th century. But the other three names were unfamiliar to Brugger, and he wanted to know more. The first city, Acanis, was apparently built on a narrow isthmus in modern Mexico, at the place where two oceans meet, that is, Panama. The second town was Acacor, and was located, according to Nara, far up the Pruis River, in a valley right on the border between Peru and Brazil. Nara described vividly this city, letting Brugger know he had visited it at least once. He said the whole city was surrounded by a thick stone wall that had 13 narrow gates, where only one person could pass at a time. At the center of Akakur was an enormous temple built for the sun god. The third forest was Akahim and was connected to Akakur. It was located on the modern borders of Brazil and Venezuela. These five fortresses were actually outposts built by ancient astronauts who colonized the Earth 10,000 years ago and the Sun Temple of Akakur had a library with documents that described an advanced cosmology unknown to modern science on Earth. This library was what piqued the interest of Brugger, who immediately spread the rumor and tried to gather a party to find the lost fortress. He would spend the following years doing exactly that. In the 1980s, the legend of Akakur became very publicized, much to the dismay of Tatunka Nara who became an unwilling celebrity in the Amazon. Several people sought him out to learn where the fortress of Akakur was exactly located, and Tatunka Nara led several expeditions that ended in disgrace. Karl Brugger himself was murdered when leaving a Rio de Janeiro restaurant on New Year's Day of 1984. His death was never clarified. In 1980, Tatunka Nara was hired by the American explorer John Reed to find Akakur. Only Tatunka returned. In 1983, he did the same with the Swiss by the name of Herbert Wanner, and Wanner never returned. His skull was identified a few years later by a group of tourists. In 1987, Tatunka went on an expedition with Christine Heuser, a Swedish woman who also wanted to find Akakur. Like the rest, Heuser disappeared without a trace. Akakur was then forgotten, and nobody was able to confirm Tatunka Nara's story, not even von Daniken. But in the last few years, scientists have used light-based remote sensing technology known as LIDAR to digitally remove the forest canopy of the Amazon jungle. This way, scientists were able to identify the ancient ruins of a vast urban settlement in the Bolivian Amazon near a location known as Llanos de Mojos. It was determined that the settlement was abandoned some 600 years ago. Anthropologists who analyze the images claim that they show a stronghold corresponding to the so-called Casarabe culture, who lived in the Amazon between the years 500 and 1400 of our era. The stronghold boasted a monumental pyramid and raised causeways connecting several nearby settlements forming a network that stretched for miles across the landscape, complete with massive waterworks and a water distribution system that included reservoirs and canals. However, to this day, no expeditions have been made to Akakur, even when scientists know its exact location. LiDAR technology also permitted the discovery of several very detailed geoglyphs, some of them are perfect, gigantic geometric forms built over 2,000 years ago 
and only visible from the sky. Some geometric trenches are 12 feet or 3.6 meters wide and 13 feet deep or 3.9 meters. As they were nearly impossible to distinguish at ground level, they were most probably used as signals for aircraft to land. One might wonder what kind of aircraft were cruising the Amazon skies 2,000 years before the present. Among the identified sites were two large urban centers, the cities of Landivar and Kotoka. Archaeologists already knew of their existence, but LIDAR is able to see what hasn't yet been unearthed and it shows that these cities spanned over more than one square mile each. Around these settlements were rings of moats and ramparts, and the technology has shown earthen platforms and even conical pyramids over 70 feet or 21 meters tall. Most of these buildings are located in the modern state of Acre in western Brazil, but perhaps the most impressive discovery of recent years is a network of hundreds of earthen mounds ranging in height from 10 to 65 feet, or 3 to 19 meters. While some of the mounds were probably used as dwellings, most of them are clearly burial places. This is significant because mounds were also observed in North America, mostly related to burial sites of a lost race of giants. Other recent discoveries include the so-called garden cities in the Brazilian region of Zingu, large settlements featuring homes, plazas, and palisade walls. These sites were connected by a complex system of roads, canals, and bridges, with sites dedicated to farming and even ponds for fish farming. Incredible engineering feats for such a primitive society. Tragically, these are located in the same region where Percival Fawcett vanished, searching for his lost city of Z. And according to scientists, these lost cities discovered thanks to LIDAR are just the tip of the iceberg. Despite not being able to find the lost cities with their gold, silver, and cinnamon, explorers have reported incredible finds over the centuries. Some of them speak of strange bioluminescent creatures, glowing rivers, and even singing trees. Perhaps the most amazing and dangerous find in the Amazon jungle is the unique Shanai Timpisca, known as the River of Boiling Water. This river was extensively studied, and its temperature is always over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That is around 100 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of water. And although nobody knows exactly how it works, its scientists agree that this strange phenomenon is produced by geothermal reasons, although there are no active volcanoes nearby. In 2011, Peruvian geoscientist Andres Russo noted an average temperature of 187 degrees Fahrenheit or 86 degrees Celsius, and observed that such temperature was fatal to the wildlife who had the bad luck of dipping into its waters. He followed the river until it disappeared into the ground, and for this reason, he concluded that the underground flow of the river somehow heated up the waters so that they were boiling when it emerged to the surface. On the other side of the Amazon, near the mouth of the Amazon River in the Brazilian state of Pará, there were an incredible amount of UFO sightings during the 1970s. The peak of sightings came in 1977, in what until this day is known as the UFO Incident of Colares because they happened in a short span of time at Colares Island. The local commotion was so great that the Brazilian Air Force decided to send a research team to find out what was happening at Colares. After a few months, the Air Force packed up everything, confiscated every local person's photographs of the UFOs, and classified them as top secret. No official explanation was given by the Brazilian government. The Colatus documents were declassified in the last few years, allowing the public to finally learn what happened in 1977. In October, the official documents claim came the first reports of circular UFOs emitting powerful light beams. In November, these sightings became part of the daily life of local people, who started to report suffering inexplicable burns, bruises, and other physical effects after being reached by the light beams. 
Only then did the government send a team of researchers who interviewed the local people and combined photographic and video evidence of the UFOs. Coincidentally, as we will see later, these sightings happened at the same time when Nazi scientists were experimenting in the Amazon jungle. For this purpose, they had built secret aviation bases and runways in the middle of the jungle, just like the ones they had already built in Antarctica. Nazi scientists who were members of the secret Tool Society were very much interested in finding the underground tunnels that connected different parts of the Amazon jungle and other regions of the world, including Antarctica. Originally, the Tool Society was a group of German occultists interested in studying the remote past of the Germanic peoples, but later became affiliated to the Nazi party where they helped Adolf Hitler escape certain death at the end of World War II. We will return to this topic later in this video. But before that, there is one other unexplained appearance in the Amazon jungle that we need to talk about. This happened in 2019, when the appearance of a dead humpback whale in the jungle made the news all over the world. Scientists were baffled to find the enormous Cetacean grounded some miles inland, although not far from the mouth of the Amazon River. This whale was approximately 4,000 miles away from its expected feeding grounds. To this day, it is unclear how it got there. And speaking of animals, the Amazon jungle has its fair share of strange and mysterious animals. At first, most of them were only known thanks to the stories of natives. But after some time, scientists discovered them and sometimes managed to capture a photograph of one of them. The Mapinguari, or Juma, was a giant humanoid animal that could reach a stature of 8 feet 2 inches, or 2 and a half meters. Its roar was supposed to be more like a guttural growl that filled the hearts of the natives with fear. Local people also reported that its smell was so strong that people who smelled it fainted every single time. Native legends explain that these animals were simply shamans who were trapped in their animal form after a failed ritual ceremony. Meanwhile, scientists believe that this type of animal, which resembled a giant sloth, had disappeared 9,000 years ago. Scientists were wrong, as is proven by the fact that many different tribes with no communication between them have consistently reported meeting a giant rainforest animal whose characteristics were the fetid smell and the strange guttural roar. The Mapinguari was considered only a folk tale by scientists until they came across the Serra de Capivara rock art depictions, where these giant sloths were seen as hunted by humans. More recently, in 2017, archaeologists entered an 8-mile long or 12-kilometer long cave deep in the Colombian Amazon to find hand-scrawled images showing the same type of giant sloth, as well as other big animals such as mastodons. The Peruvian Amazon is said to be the home of a creature known as Chulachaki, a dangerous animal that led people, and especially children, astray in the forest. This beast kidnaps children and adults, supposedly to kill them and eat them. Even plants are deathly in the Amazon. The Strychnos plant boasts about 500 different highly toxic species, and they are used by locals to poison their arrows and blow darts. Finally, much smaller than the earthen mounds made by people, certain inexplicable silk structures found in Peru were nicknamed Silkenge. At first, nobody knew what made them, but scientists discovered that there were spiders who had been creating unique silk structures for completely unknown reasons. The Silkenge designs are incredibly intricate and continue to fascinate entomologists to this day. The U.S. Air Force has declassified certain documents from the early 1940s concerning the existence of clandestine German airfields in the Brazilian Amazon jungle. U.S. spies at the time thought their main objective was to attack Panama, but as you will see, their motives were much more sinister and ambitious. Back in 1935, Germany made a supposedly scientific expedition to northeastern Brazil. The aims were vague and included the exploration of the area and finding the tributaries of the Jari River. 
but the truth was they were looking for genetical experiment subjects among the local population. There was a second objective which had to do with the possibility of taking French Guiana by force to annex it to the Third Reich. Finally, this idea was abandoned when the Nazis were able to set up bases in Antarctica. When the war ended in 1945, Nazi officials and scientists fled to America, some to Argentina and some to Brazil. Joseph Mengel, the Angel of Death, was eager to continue his genetic experiments in the New World, and southern Brazil was the perfect place to do so, as it was secluded and there was no extradition treaty between Brazil and Germany, and there were already numerous Germans who were established in the area since the 1930s. Once there, he got in touch with German officials working with extraterrestrial technology in the secret airfields to ask for protection and a private laboratory with access to human test subjects. However, nothing is known of these experiments, and he died in 1976, just before the UFO sightings of Kolaris. Geneticist James Neal and anthropologist Napoleon Chagnon took after Mengel when they got involved in certain experiments for the American Atomic Energy Commission in Venezuela. Chagnon was well known for his work among the Yanomami, a secluded but numerous tribe on the border between Venezuela and Brazil. Chagnon and Neil were responsible for starting a severe measles epidemic and killing hundreds or maybe thousands of Yanomami in the late 1960s. The exact number will never be known, as both Chagnon and the Atomic Commission declined to speak about the incident. Neil was a supporter of Joseph Mengel and a firm believer in eugenic theories. That is, the belief that one can improve the genetic quality of humankind by either killing off people with bad genes or encouraging the breeding of people with good genes. This involved infecting thousands of Yanomami to find out how resistant to diseases they were. The objective was to find out what might happen to communities after a large number of their members were wiped out, as would happen in a nuclear war. After starting the epidemic, Neil and Chagnon instructed their colleagues not to give medical assistance to the infected natives, but only observe and document the epidemic. In 1968, Chagnon published his famous book called Yanomamo, The Fierce People. He claimed that these particular people were prone to violence and warfare, and their interactions were mostly aggressive. He failed to mention in the book that he himself had introduced in the community large numbers of modern weapons such as axes and knives, and deliberately gifted them to some groups but not to others, so they would fight for control of the weapons. Chagnon and Neil's experiments were just another example that shows the extent to which things that happened in the Amazon were mostly unknown in the outside world, as Chagnon was deemed a reputable scholar even after that. With this knowledge, we can say that it is not because of bad weather or logistical difficulties that the Amazon jungle is still kept unexplored. Government cover-ups, secret and illegal experiments in military bases, and native guides leading explorers to certain death are just a few of the reasons why not many people have explored or even survived the Amazon. Even with all the available evidence of animals previously thought to be extinct, UFO sightings, lost civilizations, and advanced landscape engineering dating back hundreds of years ago, there are powerful interests that actively work to keep the treasures of the Amazon jungle a secret. Fortunately, little by little, thanks to the advancement of technology and the declassification of official documents, the truth about the Amazon rainforest is coming to light. The question is, is the general public prepared to accept it? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and share your thoughts in the comments. Keep your minds open, and until we meet again.